Take my word for it. Home will never go away. Church, we are coming back. Praise the Lord, whatever you are, we thank God for you. We bless God that we are able to come to you live from my study. Because of the grace of God upon our lives. And we really appreciate the fact that you are with us in this live broadcast. We are in for a treat. Let's pray for the word before we go to praise and worship. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I want to thank you for your word. The Bible says that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. We want to thank you for the preceding word, the word that is coming from your mouth right now in real time, for each one of us, wherever we are, in Kiambu, in the whole of this nation of Kenya, in the diaspora, we just want to bless you for this word, real time. We bless you today, in Jesus' name. Amen. Elohim. Itano one Elohim, you never change. Elohim, Itano one Elohim, you never fail. Elohim, Elohim. Shandara, 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 Shandara,
Mungu mwenye nguvu Mungu mwenye nguvu Wastahili heshima zote Mungu mwenye nguvu Mungu mwenye nguvu Wastahili heshima Wakulinganishwa na wewe Mungu hakuna mwingine hakuna mwingine wakulinganishwa na wewe Father, we thank you. You are worthy of the worship and all the praise and all the honor. We bless you today. We bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, I want to thank God for a testimony that, that is here. Thank you so much, Mom. Thank you, Maggie. Thank you, Esther. Thank you, Josh. A few days we prayed here for a family. And I bless God the husband is starting to take responsibility. The house is and the things are working now. There is a health worker here requesting some prayer so that she can continue, you know, serving or taking care of the patients. We also want us to remember your sister and her family who have been infected by the pandemic and they are in the U.S. Father in heaven in the name of Jesus I want to pray for this particular individual. My God and all other health workers right now in this country and even outside this country 
for your protection, your protection, your protection. Even as they continue to care for your people. At the same time, my God, I pray for her sister and family, which is in the U.S., and they have been affected by the pandemic. I rebuke this coronavirus from their bodies in the name of Jesus. By the stripes of Jesus, they were healed, and we command their bodies to respond to the word of God and be fully healed in Jesus' name. I want us to go to the word of God today. I'm going to go straight to Luke chapter 22 because if we say we are not going through trial in one way or the other, I would call that self-denial. I would call that denial. All of us are being tried right now. And I want you to hear the word of God. Luke chapter 22. I'm going to read from verse 31. Simon, Simon, Satan has asked to sift all of you as wheat. But I have prayed for you. Simon, that your faith may not fail. And when you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. But he replied, Lord, I'm ready to go with you to prison and to death. Jesus answered, I tell you, Peter, before the rooster crows today, you'll deny me three times that you know me. Peter, in trial. And I want us to look at this, this word, in the light of what all of us are going through this season. I want us to pick five major things that we can learn from this story that I believe will help you, will help me, because we'll be on the other side. We will make it. I, can, I, can, I guarantee you, we will make it. You will make it. Let me put it that way. This is very personal. Number one, we find that Peter is being singled out. In other words, Jesus is speaking to the person of Peter. And he is telling him, Simon, Simon. Mind you, he is calling him Simon, not Peter. He is telling him, Simon, Simon. Satan has asked for, to sift all of you. But I'm talking to you, Simon. When it comes to trial, it is personal. Before it becomes corporate, you and me are the ones who feel the pitch, the pain, on a personal level. And we find here Jesus is talking to Peter. I mean it to Simon, and he is telling him, I know this thing is coming to all of you. I know Satan wants to destroy all of you. But I'm talking to you, Simon, as an individual. Coronavirus is not a respecter of persons. Any pandemic that comes is not a respecter of persons. It comes to everybody. And the enemy has one, one aim, and that is to destroy, to kill, to steal. Using that kind of pandemic or whatever one he uses. But I want you to see something very interesting. Jesus tells Peter, Simon, Simon. I want to remind you when when Jesus, I mean, when Peter was brought to Jesus, he was brought as Simon by Andrew. And Jesus told this man, Simon, Simon, your name is going to be Cephas. That means Peter. That means you're going to be a rock. Simon is a reed. 
But this time Jesus is telling Peter, I'll call you Simon, but I know you will become Peter. You are still a reed, but I know you will become Peter. I'm speaking to you now. Right now, everything in you and you as a whole, your business, your family, stands like a reed. But I guarantee you, that does not change the destiny God has for you. You will be Peter. I declare that by the word of God. You will be Peter. Right now, you may look, what you say and who you are may not match. But I'll tell you something. Jesus knows how to get you there. He called him Simon. Simon. Read. Read. Listen to me. It is personal. It is personal. This, this thing is touching us on different levels. It's not touching us on the same level. But nevertheless, all of us are feeling it. A trial is a trial. Oh, yes. And it is not a good time. It is not. But I'll tell you something. Jesus knows who you are right now. You could be Simon. But at the same time, he knows you will become Peter. Just give him time. Number two. The Bible comes and shows us something. Jesus told Simon, Satan has desired. He has asked for permission to sift you like wheat. Hold on. Who was behind the trial? Satan. But I have news for you. In every trial, God has a redemptive purpose. He can't just allow it for the sake of allowing it. Oh, I have gone through trials. But I want you to see something. Fire is not meant to destroy gold. It's meant to get the best out of it. It's meant to get the best out of that metal you call silver. It's meant to get the best out of that metal that you call gold. It's not meant to destroy. In the same way, Peter, I want you to see something. When we sift, let's say like barley or wheat or even beans, the chaff goes down and what remains is wheat. I want you to see something very important. Peter needed some bit of flesh sifted out of him. That's why Jesus allowed it to happen. And I'm going to briefly tell you three things. Number one, the fear of man. Remember when, G, when Peter was met by a small girl a few, just a few hours later. And the girl said, this one looks like one of them. Peter said, no. I mean, he, he was afraid of a very small girl. Or maybe because of the people that were around there. She said again, but you look like a Galilean. You must be one of them. She said, no. The third time it happened, Peter was swearing how he does not know Jesus. Fear. Fear. For us to go far with God, the fear of man must be out. And not just the fear of man. Fear. Fear has to do with the torment. Fear is an enemy of faith. And the Bible says without faith it is impossible to please him. What I love is that after Peter came out of this, he was unshakable. Oh yes, he was. I'll show you that in a bit. 
Number one, I want you to see fear was being sifted out of Peter. Number two, Peter had overestimated himself. Do you remember in verse 30, four, sorry, 30, 32, 32, but I have prayed for you, Simon, that your faith may not fail. And when you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. What did Peter say, verse 33? But he replied, Lord, I'm ready to go with you to prison and to death. Romans 12, 3, do not think too highly of yourself. Just, just, just go according to the grace given you and given me. This man thought that he could just walk through Mount Everest, crushing it, and be on the other side. That's how much he was self-confidence that needed to go. Because our strength comes from the Lord. He is our strength. We cannot rely on our own strength. Number three, watch this. And this is something that affects us so much. Simon, you know, was people pleaser. He had a people-pleasing spirit. He wanted to please people at this particular time more than he pleased God. Why do I say that? You remember when Jesus died, uh, you know, uh, Peter was the first one to tell the other disciples, guys, there is nothing remaining. Let, 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 let's go fishing. Let's go. Let's go back to our businesses. Let's go. Let, 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 let's just see what we can do for ourselves. What did to please man? Why did he deny Jesus to please those authorities? Besides them, besides being afraid of them, he wanted to please them. So that he is on the safe side. When it comes to trials... These are some of the things that come out. And God wants them to come out for our good. So that I mean he can fortify us. Can I help you? Right now the enemy means to destroy. But God means to fortify you and fortify me. Purify you. Purify me because of the work ahead of us. The work of ahead, ahead of us is not for Simon. It is for Peter. It is not for a reed. It is for a rock. Small rock or pebble, whatever you call it. The kind of harvest that is on the way, I know we will be met with opposition, yes. But at the same time, I want you to see because of that harvest, Simon in you and me must give way to the Peter. God has always intended you and me to be. Always. A Peter that is bold. The Bible says the righteous are as bold as a lion. But the wicked run when nobody is following them or chasing after them. The, the kind of work that is ahead of us is not for Simon the reed. It is for Peter, a pebble. Who walks in humility. I'll say that again. Walks in humility. Knowing that Jesus is our righteousness. He is our holiness. He is our strength. He is our giftings. He is our anointings. He is our everything. Christ in us, the hope of all glory. 
If it were not for Christ in us, we would be nothing. He said without him, we can do absolutely nothing. Simon, who is proud of what he can do, must give way to Peter. Peter, who knows how to wait upon the Lord. Number one, what do we learn? We learn that the trial is personal. Jesus comes to us right where we are. He knows we are Simon, we are, but we will be Peter. We are not yet there. He knows our weaknesses. He knows our deficiencies. He will, but because he said he, he, he has already proclaimed our destiny as Peter, one day we'll be there. The devil, number two, the devil or Satan means to destroy, but God has a redemptive purpose in it. To take the flesh out. To have the flesh crucified so that the spirit, the Holy Ghost, can have his way. I, I, I mean, what we are seeing in our churches today, all over the world, what we are seeing in the church is not what God intended it to be. You walk to, any, to the majority of the churches. I don't remember. I, 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 don't, you, I may say you don't remember. When you went into a church and you were hit by the presence of the Lord at the door. Why? Too much flesh. People wanting to please one another. Entertaining one another. We, we have to go through this. We, we, there is no other way. Number three. We get from this story something that is very important in verse 32. Jesus said, I have prayed for you, Simon, that your faith may not fail. I love the last part of it. Even as I love to this thought that Jesus is my intercessor. He is my intercessor. Watch this. The Bible says, the last bit of verse 32. And when you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. What does that mean? Victory is guaranteed. Jesus knew that Peter would make it on the other side. The sifting would not kill him. The sifting would not destroy him. The sifting would only make him better. Shame on the devil. The sifting would only make him better. A better vessel for the Lord. And this is what I, what I love so much. He says, I have prayed that your faith will not fail. You will go through the pain. You will go through the stress. But at the end of the day, there will be something in you that will be left to cling to God. There it was. Even when Peter denied Jesus, because of the prayers Jesus had prayed for him, there was something in him that made him to go and repent bitterly and come back to the Lord. This is the difference between Peter and Judas. In Judas, when he was sifted, nothing remained. In Peter, Jesus had prayed for him. He told him, I prayed for you. I, I want you to stand on my prayers, Peter. Not your prayers first, but you stand on my prayers. If there is anything I have learned is to stand on the prayers of Jesus, the prayers of the Holy Ghost, who is my intercessor as well, and listen to this, and the love of the Father. More than anything, more than my prayers, more than my fasting, more than my efforts, Jesus, I mean, Peter stood on the prayers of Jesus, and he had something in him left. 
that still went back to him. The Bible says he repented bitterly. Listen to this. A contrite heart, our God will not despise. Keep those prayer requests coming. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for all of you who are tuned from everywhere. I know this, this one you will need it. Not just today, but many, many, many days to come. Because trials, temptations, they are part of life. They are part and parcel of a believer's life. It's just wonderful, wonderful to see so many of you tuned in. What did I say to you? Number one, what do we learn from this, from the trials here? Oh, Bob, from Frankfurt, bless you. Waswa, bless you. From Luanda, what did we learn? Let's go, let, 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 let's follow these thoughts. I'm so excited when I see so many people watching from all over the world. God bless you so much, all of you. We learned that tri this trial was personal, just like yours is personal. Before it becomes corporate, you, you are the one who feels where the shoe hurts. And the trials come. They come to Simon, who has a destiny. Because Jesus knows where he is taking him. Number two, the enemy means to destroy, but Jesus means that there be a redemptive purpose in the trial. Otherwise, he can't allow it. Number three, we have learned that victory is guaranteed. It is guaranteed. Let's go to number four. Number four. I love this so much. Still in verse 32, you never come out of trial empty-handed. I'll say that again. Believe God. Believe you me. I've been there many times. Jesus said, Peter, I cannot just allow it for the sake of trial. When you are out of it, you will have something to help your brothers with. What does the Bible tell us in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3 and 4? God comforts us in our troubles. So that with the same comfort, we can go and help others. We can go and comfort others. Today it's a trial. Tomorrow it's going to be a testimony. And the Bible says the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. You are going through this trial. I have gone through many trials. Some I never thought I would make. Make I mean, I would come out of. But listen to this. They are part of my testimonies. And when I give them those testimonies, they prophesy to people. People are able to see, oh, God will do it. After all, what is a testimony? Testimony means God do it again. That's what it means. God do it again. Listen to this. When we testify, and I love testimonies, we are saying, God, do it again to someone around here, to somebody out, out there. Today is a trial. Tomorrow, it is a testimony. You, that's what Jesus told Peter. Peter, you will go through it. It will be painful, humiliating. Nevertheless, it will be a testimony. You will help somebody with it. Number five. This is 
so important for you and for me, my friend. Jesus, listen to this, Jesus is with you in the trial. He did not leave Peter because the trial came. Oh no, he was watching. Mind you, even when he rose from the dead, in Mark 16, 7, the first person he wanted to see was Peter. Told me to, you know, he told Mary, I want you to go and tell my disciples, and especially Peter, 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 Peter. This time, can you imagine, he is Peter. After he has gone through it, in Mark 16, 7, Jesus is not going to call him Simon now. He's calling him Peter. He has made it. The trial has achieved its I mean, objective as far as God was concerned. And the man of God is okay. What am I talking about? Jesus said he will never leave you. He will never forsake you. He is not going to leave you now in this period. You may have lost a job, lost a business. Some of you, you can't, you know, majority of us, we can't move. Anywhere from our house, we are just moving around. The farthest we go is maybe a few meters. Maybe one or two kilometers. Nevertheless, Jesus is with us in the trial. He will never leave us. He will never forsake us. And this is not the only trial you will go through or I will go through. May the others are coming. Let's learn from this. That number one, when it comes, it may be corporate. But it is you who is wearing the shoe who feels the heart. Trials are personal. They are personal. When they come, Jesus knows where we are and where we are going. We are Simon, but we are going to become Peter. Number two, he knows that this trial, after it is true, will have been sifted. Some flesh will have been cut off, like it happened with Peter. Victory is guaranteed. And we will not come out of the trial empty handed. Jesus is with us in the trial. I want to pray right now for you. Even as you bring your tithe, you bring your offerings. I know the information is being relayed to you. The info that you need. But in the meantime. I want to declare to you, by the word of God, you will be on the other side. You will go on the other side of the pot. 